good morning students good morning to all on last day we have studied about the economic thinkers the contributions of economic thinkers in economic development so in this chapter we have studied about the economic thoughts of ambedkar and the gandhi jains and the valuers so today another one of the economic thinkers are there so amardya kumar sens so today we will study about the economic thoughts of amardya kumar sens today we will study about the economic thoughts of amardya kumar sens so amardya kumar sens certainly we will know him the amardya sens he is one of the indian noblest economist so the noble citizens refers to sens contributions sens contributions means the amardya kumar sens contributions to the social choice theories development economics study on poverty and famine and the concept of entitlement and the capability of development so he also got one of the nobel prize in 19 something so he also provided many economic thoughts and ideas to the improvement of economics to our india so some of the, under the headings we can knows about their economic thoughts first one is poverty and famines so since poverty and famines and essay on entitlement and deprivation so how the poverty is created on the basis of their income is explained by the amardya kumar sens the entitlement and deprivation is both a theoretical and applied work so in the book several famines have been studied in the working of general theoretical framework from an original angle he examined the various meaning of poverty and draw the attention to the incidence of absolute and relative deprivation how the poverty was created and the deprivations were there is explained by the amardya kumar sens in his book the entitlement and the deprivations and poverty and inequality so sens has carried out massive work on poverty and inequality in india so normally we have studied the poverty and inequality only will create at the most dangerous situations in our economic development so since major point has been that the distribution of income consumption among the persons below the poverty line is to be taken into the account the distribution of income and consumption among the persons below the poverty line is taken to be considered so but most of the persons are not having the consumption and the normal or the reasonable income so when we have or when we providing the reasonable income to that all the people those who are living in below the poverty lines then poverty and inequality will be disappear next is the concept of capability the concept of capability is developed by sens has been cited as a better index of well being than commodities or utilities so capability as defined by sen is the ability to transform raw sens primary goods to the achievement of well being so the concept of capability means so all the peoples the government have to make the all the peoples to consuming from the basic necessity of life to luxury goods next entitlement entitlement mean the rights so the government have to providing the all rights as equalized so sen has included the concept of entitlement items like nutrition food medical and health care employment security of food supply in times of famines etc so the government has to make the possibilities and the chance to getting all these rights as equalized 
he considered famine as arising out of the failure of establishing a system of entitlement so suppose if any things are if any one of things as below or above if it is not able to getting the people through the land it will be creating or it will be pave the way to arise the poverty next the science of technique the sense science of technique was a research work where he argued that in a labor surplus economy the nation of employment cannot be increased at the initial stage by the adoption of capital intensive technique so the sense advised to the government to make the labor intensive capital labor intensive industry so we have the two type of the sizes the labor intensive productions and the capital intensive product method when we are adopting the capital intensive product method so many of the peoples will be deprived their employment opportunity and the surplus labor also will be going to the agricultural and the productivity of the agriculture also will be less so mostly even if we have the possibilities to adopting the capital intensive techniques we have to adopting the labor intensive techniques to the production so under the five points we can come to know about the thoughts of the amardya kumar sense and not only that more than just an economist the amardya kumar sen is an ethical and the philosopher he is a lover of freedom and the humanist he was focused on the poor weaving them not as the object of pity requiring charitable hand but as this empowered folk needing empowerment education health nutrition gender equality safety net in times of disease all are needed to empower people not only by the pity requiring he advocated to providing the rights to getting all the people as a same wise okay students till the economic thoughts of amarjay kumar sense we have completed our chapter seven so next we will go to the chapter eight so in this chapter seven if you have any doubt please ask me in our introductions sorry intersections period okay now we will go to the next chapter our next chapter chapter eight so indian economy before and after independence we know very well about our indian economy how it was there before the independence and how it is there after the independence even if you are not knows about this we will study in this chapter this chapter discuss the major events that took place in india before and after independence so india was a colony for long period do you know what is the meaning of the colonialism So the colonialism refers to a system of political and social relations between two countries of which one is the ruler and the other is the colonies one of the domination nations one of the slaves nations so the poorest nations will be dominating the poor country so the colonial nations thus the people living in a colony cannot take independent decisions in respect of utilization of the country's resources and important economic activities so india had the bitter experience of colonialism we know before the independence we were all the peoples were living under the colonialism next indian economy during the british period how indian economy was there at the british period So India's sea route trade to Europe started only after the arrival of Vasco da Gama in Calicut, India on May 24, 1498. The Portuguese had traded in Goa as early as 1510. In 1601, the East India Company was 
started and the english began their first inroads into the indian oceans so 100 years after battle of plassey po plassey war the rule of the east india company finally did come to an end in 1858 the british parliament passed a law through which the power for governance of india was transferred from the east india company so britain had exploited india over a period of two centuries of its colonial rule so on the basis of the form of colonial exploitations economic historians have divided the whole period into the three phases the name of the three phases is period of merchant capital and the period of industrial capital and the period of financial capital so whatever happened in this every basis of period mean first the period of merchant capital the period of merchant capital was taken into the account from 1757 to 1830 1757 to 1830 the only aim of the east india company was to earn profit by establishing monopoly trade in the goods with india and the east india so we knows about the monopolies so what is the main aim of the east india company means to earning the profit so how the easiest way to earning the more profit as we have studied already if we have getting the monopoly rights we can have the more we can have the more chance to earning more profit so as by having their thinking the east indian companies had the idea to establishing the monopoly trade in the goods next during this period india had been considered as the best hunting ground for capital by the east indian company to develop industrial capitalism is better by developing the industrial capitalism the india had been considered as the best hunting ground best hunting ground mean so what are the resources was there in india everything is all exploited by the britain and for that the east indian companies also was helped to the britain so all the resources are taken from here itself and they will made some of the goods and they will sell to that people next when bengal and south india came under the political shake of the east indian company in 1750s and 1760s the objective of monopoly trade was fulfilled after the bengal and the south india next the company administration succeeded in generating huge surplus which were repeated the england and the indian leaders linked this problem of land revenue with that of the drain so those some of the leaders also made the points of we been linked with the land revenue above all the officers of the company were unscrupulous and corrupt so even if the authority persons and some of the officers are having the power to stop this unscrupulous trade they also have some of the unscrupulous and corrupted persons next is the period of industrial capital the period of industrial capital the period of industrial capital is considered as a second base of the colonialism so this period of industrial capital was from 1813 to 1858 so after the period of merchant capital is considered as a period of industrial capital so during this period india had become a market for british textile so all the british textiles was sold in indian market so the india had become a market for the british textiles 
So India raw materials were exported to England at a low price and imported finished textiles commodities to India at high price. In this way, Indians were exploited. So normally we have studied in our international trade the end report. Some of the raw materials will be exported to another one of the nations and they will be fulfilled they will make them as a finished commodities and the finished commodities will going to import to the another one of the nations but the England and in this period some of the raw materials was exported to the England at the low price and they have made as a finished product and at the same time it will import it would be imported in the India itself at a high price. So in this sense, the, all the Indian peoples were exploited. So they had, they bought some of the raw materials at a low prices from ourselves and they had imported and sold ourselves at a high price. Next, India's traditional handicraft were thrown out of gear. So mostly on the period of capital, so India's handicraft product was heavily demanded but after arrival of the textile and some of the modern goods the India's traditional handicrafts were thrown out of the gears. Next period of finance capital. The period of finance capital considered as a third base. The third base was the period finance capital starting from the closing year of the 19th century and continuing till independence. So after the 19th century too till the independence time is considered as a period of finance capital. So during this period finance imperialism began to entrench itself through the managing agencies firms, the export import firms exchange banks and some export of capitals. So Britain decided to make massive investment to various fields, rail, road, postal system, irrigation, European bank systems and a limited field of education etc. In India by blundering Indian capital. So Britain decided to make massive investment to the various field. So now what are the important departments are undertaken by the Indian government? So on this all the sectors the Britain decided to make the massive investment. And because of that we got some of the more uh, more benefit also advantages. So railway constructions policy of the British led to unimaginable as, as well as uneconomic. The poor Indian taxpayers had been compelled to finance for the construction of railways. So before the independence also the Britain government was compelled the poor citizens to pay the tax for their government. The political power was handed over to the British government by the East Indian Company in 1858. So all the political power was handed over to the British government by the East Indian Company in 1958. So after that only, so the British government made us as a slave. Next, decline in Indian handicrafts. So before the 1858, so the demand for the Indian handicraft commodities were much more. But after that arrival of the British government and the markets, so the Indian handicraft commodities or the demand for the Indian handicraft commodities declines abundantly. And how it was declined in Indian handicrafts mean? The Indian handicraft products had a worldwide market. So Indian exports consisted chiefly of hand weaved cotton and silk fabrics, calicos, artist wares, wood carvings, etc. 
So through the discriminatory tariff policies, the British government purposefully destroyed the handicraft. If any of the government wants to destroy the, the, destroy the, destroy the types of industries, they will have one of the ideas that is to implementing the new type of the tariffs and tax policy. The same idea only was taken by the British government also. By the discriminatory of the tariff policies, the British government purposefully destroyed the handicraft. So always the British government imposed the more tariff policies and the tax policies to the handicrafts. So the handicrafts was also unable to pay the tax to the British government. So because of that it was destroyed. Next with the disappearance of Nawabs and the Kings. There was no one to protect the Indian handicrafts. When there is the time of Nawabs and the Kings, they were protecting the handicrafts commodities. But after disappearing the Nawabs and the Kings, there was no one to protect the Indian handicrafts. So because of that also, the Indian handicrafts commodities was declined. Next, Indian handicraft product could not compete with the machine made product. So, the British government adopted the many techniques to produce any of the commodities, the machine made commodities. But the machine made commodities over, pass over the handicraft commodities produced by the Indian government. Next, Indian handicraft products could not compete with the machine made products and the introduction of railway in India increased the domestic market for the British good. So and not only that on the basis of consumers behaviors so they had more desire to consuming the British goods. So the introduction of the railways also helpful to bringing the domestic market for the British goods. Next concept is the land tenor system. The land tenor system. The land tenor system refers to the system of land ownership and management. So nowadays we have heard about one of the word, the lease. Some of the place, some of the cotton also will be provided to the other persons to the lease. So in this event, the other persons, the third persons became as a ownership for a particular time on the basis of lease. So the meaning of tenor is also the lease. So the land tenor system refers to the system of land ownership and the management. The features that distinguish a land tenor system from the others related to the following. So what are the concept? Or on the basis of, or how can we say, some of the feature distincts are there. What are the distincts means? Who owns the land? Who owns the land? Next, who cultivates the land? After that, who is responsible for paying the land revenue to the government? If you are earning the income, we have to pay some of the tax to the government then who will responsible to for paying the land revenue to the government so based on these questions three different types of land tenor existed in india before independence so they were zamindari system and the magalwari system and the raidwari system so we can classify the land tenor system as a three types. One is the Samindari system, Magalwari system and Rayatwar system. First the Samindari systems. So this system was created by the British East India Company when 1793. So Lord Cornwallis introduced the Permanent Settlement Act. We have You have studied about the Lord Cornwallis. So he was introduced the Permanent Settlement Act under this system. The landlords or the Samindars were declared as the owners of the land and they were responsible to pay the land revenue to the government. 
the share of the government in total rent collected was fixed at 10 by 11 the balance going to the samindars as remunerations so on the basis of the amindari systems the samindars only have to introduce it, who is the owners of that land and the land also the land owner also have to providing the providing the total rent collected as a 10 east 11 if you have the 11 percentage earnings the 10 percentage have to provide that and the one percentage going to the samindars as a rent next magalwari systems so after introduction of this system it was later extended to madhya pradesh and punjab the ownership of the land was maintained by the collective body, usually the villages, which served as a unit of management. They distributed land among the peasants and collected revenue from them and paid it to the state. So on the basis of Mahalwar systems, those who able and get the interested to cultivate the land, that persons only begin as a ownership of the land. Next, Raidwari system. The system was initially introduced in Tamil Nadu and later extended to Maharashtra, Gujarat and Assam. So under this system, the ownership right of use and the control of land were held by the tiller himself. So there was the direct relationship between owners. The system was the least oppressive system before independence. So before independence, the Raidwari system only is considered as a least oppressive systems because those who have the interest to cultivate or who is the real cultivator he only has the he only is considered as a ownership of the land he has the direct relationship with the owner okay students i think it's enough so today we have started the third lesson the eighth lessons before and after independence Indian economy before and after independence so if you have any doubt please ask me in our interactive sections